Thanks, Ashley. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how to deal with the anxieties of life. The last several months, we have all experienced a range of emotions. Sometimes that emotion moves from just concern or worry to anxiety. Just a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I was here at the office doing some work. I get a text from her right, after, right in the middle of a Zoom call. And it said, I looked at it, it said, we have a bat in the house. I texted back a bat. Like, is it a flying bat, vampire bat? What kind of bat is this? She says, no, it's in our cabinet next to the fireplace. And so I still had another coaching meeting after that. So as soon as we got home, we looked, sure enough, there's a bat in our cabinet flying. And so we called the bat guy. Did not know there was a bat guy, but there is. He came over, was able to capture the bat and take the bat, I'm sure, to some place out in the country on a farm where the bat's living happily ever after. But we got rid of that bat as we were a little bit concerned about rabies. The, the guy, the bat guy said, no, you, unless the bat was in your bed, you should be okay. But Susan said, well, what are some signs of rabies? So we looked that up. Here, here are some signs of rabies and see if you can maybe relate to some of them that you may have experienced. Uh, irritability, aggressiveness, excessive movement or agitation, confusion, bizarre or strange thoughts, and anxiety. I looked at her, I said, hey, we've been having bat fever for the last four months. We had rabies that whole time. And we kind of thought, you know, laughed and thought, well, we, we've really experienced a range of emotions. Most of us have. Anxiety within itself is not necessarily bad. Oftentimes it's a healthy emotion because it helps us understand the possibility of danger, activating that fight and flight syndrome that we have. But when we feel anxiety on a regular basis in a disproportionate level, oftentimes that leads to both emotional, uh, physical, mental, and spiritual disorders or unhealthy. So today I want to look at what does the Bible say about how to deal with anxieties? And oftentimes when we're in that anxious moment, we feel alone and we feel like as we're just self-dependent on how to deal with that ourselves. But the scriptures clearly say we're not alone. The scriptures will clearly tell us today that we have help if we look for it. So this turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Philippians 4, 6, or 8, or open up your app, and Philippians 4, 6, and 8, follow along as I read. This is the Apostle Paul writing. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good repute, if there's any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. So as we first look at this, Paul tells us this, be anxious for nothing. And here's what Paul is not saying. It does not mean that we should not have a total lack of concern. If something's going wrong, we have furloughed, we're having financial issues, there, there's an element of concern that we need to, to look at. Nor does it mean that we as followers of Christ need to be careless. Instead, it means that believers need not be fearful. We don't have to be paranoid or uneasy or move to anxiousness. Why? Because we as followers of Christ can speak directly to God. We can communicate directly through him, through his son, Jesus Christ, who is the, the maker of heaven and earth, who has the power and authority to deal with our situation and who promises to be with us in his control of our situation. So be anxious for nothing, not because of something within us, but because we have a heavenly father that cares for us, that loves us, and knows what we're going through. Then Paul gives us three things we can begin to do to help deal with the anxieties of life. Now, I, I made these easy for me to understand because that's just how I kind of think as a consultant and a coach helping people. Three things. First one is this. He says, but in everything by prayer. So the first thing we do is we look up. Look up. Looking up is an act of worship where we look up, we raise our hands up and say, God, we need your help. So, certain examples, Mark chapter 7, Jesus looked up into heaven and prayed before he healed a man. John chapter 17, Jesus looks and says, as he looked toward heaven and prayed. Psalms 121 
says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We look up for guidance. We look up for hope. We look up for comfort. We look up for help. We look up is a symbolism of releasing control. If I am no longer in control of my situation, I can't control it. I can't change it. But Father, I know that you can deal with it. And I'm showing dependence upon Christ, dependence and confidence in that he will be able to see me through my circumstance, as well as that he's with me in my circumstance. Now, here's what this doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that we're going to, we as followers of Christ are going to live a worry-free life. Nor does it mean that sometimes additional help, counselor, therapist, sometimes we might need that to, to help us move forward and continue on. It's not a lack of confidence and dependence on Christ. But it does show that by addressing the problems that we're facing, the concerns that we're facing in life, we start with prayer. We start with prayer. We look up in dependence upon God and say, I need your help in this situation. All of us are looking to something. The question is, what are you looking to today to help you solve your problem? Who are you looking to today to solve your problem? Paul says this, the first thing we do is we look up. The second thing we do is we give up, says, and supplication. So you say prayer, I look up, supplication, let your request be made known to God. Where we lay the burdens, we lay our concerns, we lay our, just our, our hurt sometimes to the feet of the cross, the feet of Jesus. I was talking with a client yesterday, and there was just a, such a sense of overwhelmness that they had. They were so overwhelmed with all that was going on in their life, with their spouse being COVID-19 uh, uh, sensitive, and, and then they just had someone in the uh, office who's got COVID-19, and just, just the heaviness of what they were experiencing in their life. And we carry that. We carry that heaviness. I've had friends that have been furloughed. I've had friends that have lost their jobs. I've had friends that sick. A high school friend of mine died when was the first uh, people that died of the COVID-19. had a lot of underlying health issues, but he passed away. We weren't able to have the funeral. His mom wasn't able to go. There's just so much going on of what we carry. Jesus says this, or Paul Peter says this in 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on Jesus because he cares for you. We carry around the weight like we carry around a heavy backpack. We carry this round of, of what we need to do and how we can handle it. When we look up, we're showing dependence. When we give up, we say, this is what I need from you. This is how I need you to respond. And we open up our backpacks and we unload it. And we unload it. And we unload it. Here's a struggle. At least it's my struggle. Maybe not yours. I will go to God. I'll look up and realize, hey, I can wholly depend upon you. I, I can't depend upon myself. So I'm looking up for help, for comfort, for strength, for hope. And I give up. I, I lay down things. And I give my backpack of pain and hurt, concerns. But then what happens is, so I take it back. And I say, thanks, God. I appreciate everything you've done. And I still carry this. Once we give it up, we lay it down and we let it go. So the question I have around this one is, what do you need to give up today? What are you still hanging on to that you need to let go of? Well, you've looked up and you've prayed and you've prayed and you've prayed and you've laid your burdens upon Christ because you know he cares for you. All of your anxiety is on him. But as soon as you lay it down there, you take it right back up and you carry it again. So we look up. What are you looking to? We give up. What do you need to give up today? And then thirdly, Paul says, we fill up with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Grateful heart fills us. Neurologists, two neurologists did some studies and they said this. When we express gratitude or even receive gratitude from other people, our brain releases dopamine and serotonin, the two crucial neurotransmitters responsible for our emotions. And they make us feel good. They enhance our mood immediately and making us feel happy from the inside out. So we show a thankful heart where we fill up our heart of gratitude of what God is doing in the midst of our circumstance. First Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18 say this, Rejoice always, 
pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. Notice it doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. It says give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The struggle is oftentimes we're going through difficult situations like all of us have experienced the last four months. We have a tendency to focus on what we lose as opposed to what we gain. I've shared with this congregation, with this community, that four years ago I had an aneurysm that burst in the middle of my head, a six day hour brain bleed in the hospital, 23 days, I see 21 of those. And I can remember vividly being home about the second week, I think it was the first week of January. And I was looking in the mirror and I was rubbing this, my shunt, which drains into my tummy here. And my wife, Susan said, you know, sweetheart, that shunt's keeping you alive right now. And I said, yeah, but they told me in the hospital that my hair would cover it up and that didn't happen. And we laughed and, but I sat there in the chair and I thought, I'm just starting to kind of feel sorry for myself. And I thought, you know what? What do I have to be thankful for? So at night, I would just lay in bed, and the way I'd go to sleep is, hey, these, these are some people I'm thankful for. I, I am so thankful for Susan. She was such a phenomenal support system for me. She's in the hospital. She was up there 23 days. Thankful for my family who was there, my friends who were there, people in churches who were praying for me. I just started thinking about the people in my life, and here are the things I'm thankful for. And I'd go to sleep. I'd just go to sleep, counting my blessings. That helped me kind of shift my mindset to stop feeling sorry for myself, begin to move forward. 2020, this was going to be my best year from a business standpoint ever. I had a lot of work laid out with the Ken Blanchard companies. I had my own company. I had a lot of work laid out for them, hoping at some point to transition just where I can work for myself with my own company. I had one client, we we're going to do a two day emotional intelligence class in the spring and in the fall. And if those worked, we would do one once a month in 2021. When I got home on March the 20th from a week in Washington, DC, they'd already started shutting down, by the way, I almost, I almost didn't want me to go on that Sunday. I got home that Friday, they shutting the hotel down by Wednesday and shutting things down. Airport was empty at Dulles when I landed in, in Intercontinental. It was empty there as well. Got home and I called the client that was going to do the two classes and I had some other work with them. They said, hey, everything's canceled for the rest of the year. We're not sure about 2021. All my days with Ken Blanchard companies, all my face-to-face, -face, all those canceled. Susan and I began to look at our finances because I have the type of job, if I work, I get paid. If I don't work, I don't get paid. I'm not on salary. And we begin to pray and really seek the Lord. And I kind of started feeling sorry about myself. I wait a minute, what do I need to do? Well, one thing I can learn is different virtual modalities. So I've learned every virtual modality is that the first week and a half, uh, Adobe Connect, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, and started delivering virtual days. And all of a sudden, I begin to shift my mind. What's been a benefit? Oh, also, I was at 1.9 million, 255,000. I'm almost a two. This year I was going to make a two million mile club in United. I have no idea what that means, but they sent me, hey, you're going to make two million miles this year. Nope, not now. And I thought, well, what's, what's, what do I, what have I gained by being home? Well, one is I'm not on a plane every week and I feel much better. My blood pressure is down. I feel physically better, mentally better. I'm able to see my wife every day. We have dinner every night now. I'm able to work at home with her. I'm not sure how excited she is about that, but I enjoy that. I'm able to sleep in my own bed. There's, there's so many benefits. I start thinking, what have I gained from this element? What can I be grateful for? Now, it doesn't mean that we didn't have to shift our budget. It doesn't mean that I haven't had to hustle in different areas, but it means I, nothing I can do about the past. There's nothing I can do about the consequences. I have nothing control over, but I can look up and be dependent upon him. I can give up those burdens and concerns and I can fill up and be thankful for what God is doing in my life right now. Gratitude helps me release those negative emotion, toxic thoughts, those toxic feelings to move toward God as opposed to away from him. So a question I have for you, what are you grateful for today? What are you grateful for that in spite of things that everyone, we've all lost something. But what are you grateful for? Paul says this, when we look up, 
when we give up, when we fill up, this is what happens. Look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God must, first of all, you must be at peace with God. A conscious choice of relationship and friendship with Christ is indispensable to true peace. Paul says this, he guards two things, our heart and our mind. Our heart are our emotions, our mind are our thoughts. Because I don't know about you, but it is easy for me to start thinking differently and start feeling differently based on what I'm seeing in the circumstances. I'm a morning person. Morning, I am good to go. But boy, about 9 o'clock, 9.30 at night, I start getting tired. My thoughts go a different way. I start feeling a different way. And by the way, I've got to submit to Christ. Submission to Christ brings peace. And when I look up and when I give up and when I fill up, it says I can experience that peace which surpasses all comprehensions. And Paul gives us some additional help in dealing with our concerns, our anxieties. He says this in verse 8, finally, brethren, and the final is really wrapping up the whole chapter there, chapter 4, but I think we can apply it to this as well. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good repute, if there's any excellence in anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Either on your app or your Bible, would you highlight or underline, dwell on these things. Dwell on these things, meditate, revolve them in your mind over and over and over again. Seriously consider them. Let them be the object of your careful attention in order to put them into practice. See, the, the, the truth is where your focus goes, your mind goes. Where your focus goes, your mind goes, which then impacts our emotions because of what I think impacts how I feel, which impacts how I behave, which impacts my results. So where's your focus right now? Is it on things that are true, things that are honorable, things that are right, things that are pure, lovely, good repute, excellence, worthy of praise? See, what happens is we oftentimes struggle in the midst of chaos where we focus on Christ because we focus on our circumstances. In the Old Testament, the sea was symbolizing or symbolized chaos, something to be feared. In the New Testament, there's interesting stories in three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and John. In Matthew chapter 14, the, uh, the apostle writes a story. Jesus is teaching at the Sea of Galilee. He sends disciples on ahead in, in, the, in the Sea of Galilee. He goes up to the mountains, Jesus does, to pray. I've been to the Sea of Galilee. It's really just a really, really big lake. But if you're in the middle of it, it feels like you're in the ocean because sometimes you can't see the banks. Also, the wind can come on, up on there, and it can make the waters very rough, especially if you're in a small fishing boat. So the story goes on to say that it becomes evening, and there's a storm comes up, the wind comes up, the boat's being tossed back and forth, and disciples think they're going to die. They see in the distance a figure, which they think is a ghost. And in their minds, if they see a ghost, they think, well, we must be next then. If we see a ghost, it may be the angel of death coming to get us. And Jesus says this, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. You say, hey, I'm coming your way. I'm here. And then impetuous Peter, I love this, he says, Lord, if it's your will, can I come to you? If you say the word, let me come to you. Jesus says, come. Now, Peter wasn't trying to escape the danger of the boat. He just knew the best place to be was to be with Jesus. So he steps out. And the scripture says he's walking on the water towards Jesus. Then he sees the wind. We really can't see the wind, but what you can see is the results of the wind, which is the waves. It's the white caps that were coming up because of the storm. And when he does, he begins to sink. Jesus grabs him, saves him, puts him back in the boat. And they sail on as the story concludes his air. See, we try to focus on Jesus, but it's so easy to focus on seeing the wind, the circumstances of our lives, the, the difficulties of our life. And we lose focus because where our focus goes, our mind goes. If our focus is on Christ, our minds will stay in Christ. If our focus becomes set on our circumstance, 
And that's where our mind will go to our circumstance. And rather than having the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, we'll begin to feel anxious. And that's a struggle. But it's the truth that God gives us because he says, I am here. Same thing he said to the disciples, says to us today, take courage. I'm here. Don't be afraid. Would you think about what you could do today to make peace with God? There's some of you who say, Phil, I, I'd love to have that peace, but I've never experienced a personal relationship with Jesus Christ where I've really committed myself to him. There'll be people here at the Brook who can help you do this because they're all about community, bringing people in and helping you grow and develop to be a real person with a real relationship with Christ. Maybe some of you who, you're like me, you're just struggling. And you're wondering, you're, you're praying and it's one day at a time. And there's some things that this whole COVID-19 and everything else that's surrounding it has really had a, a negative impact on your income, on your relationships, on just, just your way of living. And you're concerned. And you're concerned with move to anxiety. I encourage you today, look up. Look up to Jesus. Give up the burdens and concerns you have. He'll take those on because he cares for you. And fill up, focus on the things that he's given you that you have as opposed to what you've lost. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much that you love us, that you care deeply for us, and you want us to have a relationship with you. And you also want us to be able to trust you in the midst of the storms, in the midst of our difficult circumstances, that we don't have to be anxious but we can look up to you and worship. We can give you our burdens and concerns and anxieties because you care for us. And we can fill up and be thankful in our circumstances for all things. And we praise in Jesus' name, amen.